So in a previous video, I spoke on estrogen dominance. Now, estrogen just doesn't come out of nowhere. Well, in context, of course it does. But for this video, I'm talking about food. Now there are natural sources of estrogen, such as your phytoestrogens, and then there are man-made versions of estrogen. Because of course, if we can make a dollar in it, you know we gotta put our hands in there. And those are your synthetic estrogens. Now, these estrogens will come more so from like your fast foods and your process, well, your processed foods, all of, things of that nature. So that's what your synthetic estrogens are. Now, there are other forms of estrogen, but for not too much of a brain overload, we're gonna get into, you know, the, the basic forms, the synthetic forms, I mean, not the synthetic, but the, the, the main sources, mainly because I'm not a doctor. I only know but so much. Now you may think in phytoestrogens, they occur naturally, so they can't possibly be bad for me. Well, that's true and not true, in a sense. Because see, let's look at it. Now see, let's see, let's say you are low in estrogen, okay? So you eat high estrogen foods. Well, automatically, it'll boost your estrogen levels up, the body takes care of itself, and everything works out perfectly. In some people's world. See, the thing about it is, the body is it's an incredible machine for lack of a better word the call i mean i don't want everybody, i don't want everyone thinking i i'm thinking you know it's a bunch of t1000s walking around if you got that reference comment below anyway see the interesting thing about the body is when something's low and you how can i put it okay let's do it like this okay so when something's low in the body all right so the body's already not really producing it like it should be anyway there's something going on wrong now suppose you decide you want to supplement for it and let this let the supplement be for high estrogenic foods so now you're eating high estrogen foods so guess what okay the body's like all right so we're getting estrogen in now from the foods we're eating so i guess i'll just be lazy and i won't even make any estrogen at all and it'll cease to existence. I've never really got that about the body, but then I guess life kind of works like that. It's one of those things, why do it if I don't have to? Or why try? I mean, what, what's, thing, what, what's something I've heard um, people saying, you know, what is he gonna buy the cow if he gets the milk for free? That's, that's, that's an older saying. Anyway, excuse my ramble, but this is a big problem when your body decides, okay, I'm eating estrogen, I'm gonna stop making it. Huge issue, okay? Let's think insulin resistance on top of that. Um, that it's compl two completely different things, but in the context, like it kind of works the same way. So you have estrogen receptors, and kind of like with the insulin, they can get overloaded, or they can be blocked. And what tends to happen is, things just get all out of whack and all crazy, like it's just, ah. Uh, it's a hot mess. So then you just have all these floods of estrogen in your body and your body has no idea possibly what to do with it. Your body has no idea how to regulate it. What about us people that are already estrogen dominant? And we, and in turn, we eat phytoestrogen food. Because see, estrogen dominance is a bad thing. And it could mean you have bad estrogen in your body. Well, in, in, in turn, what I'll do is I'll eat good estrogen you know natural estrogen replace the synthetic estrogen with the phytoestrogens and in that way everything will balance itself out maybe because see you already you already have an issue with the estrogen dominant so e eating more estrogen when your body isn't already regulating it and controlling it like it should be can cause even more of an issue which is kind of like, it's kind of like a catch-22, like you can't, either you lose or you lose, you know? Now, a quick rundown of some of these estrogenic foods. Let's go through a couple, or quite a, shoot, quite a few if you ask me. Almost all beans, fr some fruits, nuts, seeds, some vegetables. Ah, that's, 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 that's the catch right there. That's the kicker. And um, speaking of that, herbs also. One that a little piece of my soul died. But it's okay because I shouldn't have I shouldn't have ever uh, dove in it anyway. But marijuana itself, or the lovely Mary Jane, if you want to call it a joint weed, I, I don't know what I don't know what you may call it in your particular area that, area that you live in. But it's very estrogenic, not just 
the herb itself, but the smoke from it. We just, just a moment of silence for that. Mm -mm -mm. All right, no shotguns. Now, if you don't mind, because it is so like, this list is long. I got more of the popular foods. I didn't get all of them. I'm actually gonna put a link um, to a PDF file below. So you can go there and check out like a long list of different foods and it'll say the phytoestrogens, the content or the count that this particular food has. And you can judge on yourself what it is in that particular list that you like and don't like or what you want to say take out of your body. Now, flaxseed is one, which I did not know. I mean, I was consuming flax milk, um, flax meal, you know, uh, what else? You know, in, in one of my previous videos, I had those flax chips. I ate every last one of them. They were, they really were good. They really were good. But flaxseed is an, is very high in estrogen, and me myself suffering from estrogen dominance. I did not know. Well, previously, not saying I don't have it now. I, I, I just don't know. I just live a healthier lifestyle, and I'm, I'm still pretty young. It doesn't affect me as bad. But that's why I want to continue to take care of myself. So, when the time does get here and I am older, and my, metabol my, my metabolism starts to slow down and so, so much of the damage starts to catch up with me, hopefully I can kind of be in a good position. Now another thing is anything soy. And what I didn't know was we even have soy in our gum. Like anything, any soy source, like, uh, like tofu. Tofu's for the vegans out there. Like that's, that's high in estrogen. Uh, let's see, what else do I have? Peas, I don't, I don't eat peas anyway. But for those that do, sesame, sesame oil, sesame seeds, that's high in estrogen. Sunflower seeds. Oh. I knew it. I know. Pretty much, I'm gonna run down this list of all my little snacks, things I like. You know, turmeric, thyme, yucca, and I'm guessing the yucca root goes in that category also. Cinnamon, garlic, olive oil. I guess I'll just be seasoning with salt and pepper from now on. When it comes to the fruits, apricots, prunes, dates, and especially dry fruit. Like dry fruit is, isn't the best. And I was told by my personal trainer that anytime you dry a fruit or dehydrate it, like the sugar content or either I guess the, the insulin response goes up. Sweet potatoes, parsley, any whole grains. So I'm guessing this goes for alcohol too because alcohol is made with grains. So even what what like vodka and that's interesting. I'm gonna have to dig. I'm gonna have to dig a little further into that. Now dairy, I don't quote me on it, but I'm almost certain dairy does have estrogenic effects because anytime a little inside thing between me and you, anytime I have a recipe where I have to eat cheese, I pay for it the next day. On my day my day to day life, I don't eat cheese. I don't really mess with dairy unless I, I do do a tablespoon of heavy whipping cream and my bulletproof coffee, but no more than that. And I eat butter, of course, but chestnuts, almonds, which means your almond flour, peanuts. <sighs> peanuts get a very, very bad rep, I swear they do. Cashews, walnuts, hazelnuts, pistachios, blackberries, pomegranate, onion, winter squash, broccoli, green beans, collards, and of course, as I said, some herbs, which would go for our good lady Mary Jane or marijuana, and also hobs, which you can find in beer. That's a lot. A lot of things are estrogenic. It. I want to say now it is kind of a. I don't know if it's a pandemic or epidemic. I have to look that up so I can use the word properly. But the estrogen dominance effect is like really, really taking over. And if you want to better your health, I think this is something you definitely want to look into. This is something I definitely incorporate into my day-to-day -day life is keeping my estrogen levels as low as possible. I didn't speak on xenoestrogens that you get from like your BPAs, your plastics, things of that nature. I didn't speak on those. I no longer use plastics to the best of my ability. There's no way to completely get rid of them because I mean in the supermarket, almost everything is in plastic. And if there's a particular brand, if they just use glass, I will support that brand. 
for giving me that option. I'll just pay a little extra. I don't mind. Now, I'm not saying you have to stay away from everything. That'll be on a person-to-person -person basis. And it depends on how well your body ha handles estrogen, you know? It's been, but if, if you're a male, if you're a male, you want to have as less estrogen as possible. If you're a female, you want to have your estrogen controlled as much as, as much as possible. Me personally, I just limit my estrogenic foods. As I stated, there are certain vegetables. Um, I've been cutting a lot more vegetables out to try to control that within myself. I don't know if I can get rid of my gum. Uh, that's, that's something to think about. I'm not quite sure yet. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any ideas or any thoughts you know based around, based upon this um or any foods that you like to add in the comment below i'll gladly pin it to the top if you know if you have good foods that i can just throw up there i guess you could say <laughs> to help out you know to help out the other viewers i'm completely open to your ideas when it comes to these things because you know we're all learning and we learn from each other we learn from you can't trust these studies out here that's, that's the crazy thing about it. You can't trust the studies because they lie so bad to us and you don't know what's fact from fiction. But, as I said, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If this is your first time viewing, hit that subscribe button. We do so many different things and we got a lot of things coming for 2018. I'm actually working on a little vlog. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do it yet, but I want to incorporate that into the channel because I'm actually, I actually have quite a few goals for 2018 and I like to share it with you guys and then also give you guys a little inside look on who I am as a person. But I'm Darius. This is Sugarless Crystals, your sugar-free destination of YouTube and I will see you next time. Bye.